All right, guys, it just got here, so let's go ahead and unbox this, and then we'll go out to Big Bear Lake. Actually, we're going to be there for the next few days. Get some fun footage with this. Travel vlog time. All right, so we're back in the car. Let's see how the uh, auto ISO works. Why are Canon cameras always that much more difficult than Sony? For whatever reason, you've got to set this to very specific, basically manual video mode. That's the only way you get 4K footage and you don't have an automatic ND filter at that point. We'll talk more about all this later, but right now let's get on the road. We got about a three hour drive to Big Bear Lake where we got the fun old cabin. I'll see you guys there. I really don't get this. <laughs> We're, uh taking a ton of side roads. We still got an hour 45 left. We've been on the road for two hours, 15 minutes. So we just got all unpacked here. It's a uh, pretty cool cabin. We'll do a tour, I think, when we're on the EOS R, probably switch to a different camera. There's a backyard. Check this out. Cabin life. Uh, pretty good weekend here planned. So we got tons of meat, good amount of coconut waters. We're just gonna get uh, some workouts in, have some fun. With that, let's go head down to the lake. So I got in a little bit later than expected. We're gonna do tonight kind of a low light test with this guy. So we're gonna walk around. It's got a one inch sensor, 1.8 aperture. Should do pretty well. Uh, so let's get some low light tonight and then actually we'll finish tomorrow morning and that's when we'll throw it up against the RX100. I already have a good amount of impressions against the RX100, but I think seeing the footage actually side by side will help validate that. We can definitely talk about usabilities and how the two cameras kind of work compared to one another, overall form factor. What do I think? Let's find out. What are you doing? Good smells? Good smells? Oh! Gotta be honest, I think I actually swallowed some bug spray, so I'm getting loopy. Just kidding. Um, this area is not the safest to walk a dog, and I unfortunately am an idiot and didn't bring a flashlight. We're gonna try to make it towards town. We've got a, uh, We've got a sidewalk right now, so we're gonna follow this as much as we can. If we make it towards the water, definitely get you guys some low light. Otherwise, we might come back in the morning, but I'm not sure yet. So keep heading down the path and I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, so this is one of the best low light examples we're gonna get tonight. Uh, we're walking outside a store here, so let me just kind of shift around, get my face in low light. Uh, I don't know, a little torn, but uh, honestly, I love this camera so far. I think I definitely need a few more hours with it. So let's fast forward to the morning. I'll see you guys there. I don't think tonight was a good idea. All right, just hitting a quick morning run. Let's get down to the lake. Beautiful morning. I'm actually really enjoying this camera a lot. Um, so far, a lot more than the Sony, but technically I think we're gonna see the Sony's better. It'll be very interesting to stack them side by side. Let's run back now, we'll get back to the cabin, and then we'll throw them up against one another. I don't know if there's much better than cooking bacon in a cabin, and then we're gonna cook the eggs in this afterwards. We've got this beautiful cabin. We've got a fenced in front yard. We've got a giant backyard that's all fenced in too. And this is what my dog does. Same thing she does at home, sleeping on the couch.
All right, so now's as good as time as any. Let's go ahead and do kind of a walking stabilization test. Got both the cameras out right now, uh, side by side. I can tell you already, I, I know the Canon's gonna win here. It's got stabilization, the RX100 I've used many times. Does not have stabilization, and my dog's pulling me, so that doesn't help either. <laughs> While we're doing this, let's switch between both the onboard audio on each of these, see how they sound. Honestly, I was pretty impressed this morning with what came out of the Canon, so I don't know that we're necessarily gonna need to use that lavalier mic as much as I had planned. So let's get some more footage. We'll go fly the drone in a bit and keep on hiking. See you guys. All right, what we're doing right now is trying to check out the HDR between the two. So we've kind of got me in the shadows. We've got a bunch of highlights in the background. How do those look? I'm seeing zebra lines on both. Be curious. So we're using no picture profile on the Sony. It's not fair because the Canon doesn't have log or really any picture profiles other than their color profile things like vivid uh, portrait, some of those, which I don't mess with. I just leave it on automatic or go to standard. So right now, what do you guys think? How's the overall HDR looking? Is one significantly better than the other? I think once the focus is grabbed on the Canon, it looks really good. Uh, pretty happy with that, but the Sony is definitely focusing faster. All right, so we found a beautiful spot here to fly the drone. And one thing I want to call out right now is why we're comparing this to the Mark 5A of the RX100 and not something like the Mark 6 or Mark 7 that's coming out soon. And that's because when you look at price point, when you look at aperture, when you look at zoom range, when you look at the fact it has a built-in ND filter, these are very comparable cameras. I don't feel like the Mark 6 or Mark 7 is appropriate to compare to this. Much more expensive. On top of that, it doesn't have the same aperture. And again, the zoom range is very different. So to me, this is more suited for video, especially because it has the audio input now it's got stabilization it's a really good vlogging camera Hope this 4K video comes out. There's a deer over there. All right, that's digital zoom. Thanks, Hayes. So that's what digital zoom looks like. Don't don't recommend that. But uh, yeah, right there's a little deer. Wonderful wild wilderness. So today's video is really gonna stick to vlogging because I wanted to compare these two in that format. I wanted to make this a vlog, have a lot of fun with it. Um, I knew I was gonna be traveling. We'll do future comparison videos where we'll do a lot more photos, a lot more video examples, and just kind of understand which is the overall better camera. But specific to vlogging, uh, that's really what this video is about. So let me know what you guys think. Again, stabilization as we're walking right now, not the RX's strong suit. So I'm hoping the GX7 here is doing a lot better. All right, so that's gonna do it for the vlog review today. Honestly, I'm uh, really happy with the G7X3 here. So I think, yes, the Sony may even in some scenarios have a better picture quality. It was a little bit sharper, I noticed in some of those, but ultimately, what do you need out of a vlogging camera? And there's three things. Stabilization to me is number one. If you have shaky, shaky footage, no one can watch that in a sustained manner. Number two is audio. You need good audio, and not only is the onboard audio to me better out of the G7X, but you also can use external audio, which is a great plus. And I'm not gonna spend 1200 bucks on the new Mark 7 when it's still gonna have shaky footage. Number three to me is picture quality. And I think it's subjective which one looks better. In some scenes, I actually think the G7X to me, the skin color maybe looked a little bit better, but then side by side, it looked a little red in other scenes and it wasn't as sharp. So I do think, in other scenarios, this is gonna win out with the RX100. That's why I'm curious to put them up against one another really in a non-vlogging style test. So sheer picture quality, sheer video quality to see what you guys think. But today for the vlog test, G7X thumbs up for me. So. I love this camera. I'm really happy with it so far. For $750, I absolutely recommend it. The focusing was the biggest issue for me. That was a big problem. If you noticed, it eventually grabs focus, but if you're moving around a lot, even scenes when it was bright out, it would take a good five, six, seven seconds to actually grab my face. Once it locked on, it was good, but it had my face shown in the tracker. It just wasn't grabbing focus for whatever reason. Something to be aware of, but overall, guys, thanks for joining me today. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that thumbs up if you liked this. Otherwise, leave me some comments if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys next time.